Alrighty guys, Backlash 2023 is in the books and between Bloody Brock and Bad Bunny, this was a freaking NXT TakeOver Backlash. It was a great show from Puerto Rico. We're going to talk all about it right here on the No Nation Wrestling YouTube channel. Alright guys, before we get into this video, I want to remind you to hit the join button down below and become a Backstage Pass channel member. Exclusive videos at least once a week, but probably more coming for channel members starting this coming week. So definitely hit the join button down below and stay tuned for those exclusive videos. But let's get into Backlash, man. Both nights, SmackDown and Backlash, Puerto Rico was on fire. And hell, I want more international shows, dude. Uh, USA crowds are so spoiled. We get It's guaranteed for major cities to get, you know, maybe two WWE shows every year, some of the smaller cities cities same thing like wwe is constantly you know in the the tri-state area for me just as an example the usa crowds are so spoiled and I, i've come on here all the time and talked about how i hate when crowds are just dead why buy tickets to a show if you're just gonna sit on your hands international crowds are where it's at man montreal in february for elimination Tra elimination chamber excuse me great clash of the castle last year great puerto rico phenomenal crowd i can't wait to see what london's gonna be like for money in the bank man if i'm wwe you, you know, you want to go to, you know, wherever in the U.S. for Raw and SmackDown, occasional pay-per-view, whatever, but more and more they should keep going international, man, because the crowds help make shows even better, and the crowd for both SmackDown and Backlash tonight were freaking awesome. Kicking off Backlash, though, we had the Raw Women's Championship match, Bianca Belair defending against Io Sky, and as expected, this match was, well... well one of the best matches of the night. I'd say the second best match of the night. It was definitely the best wrestling match of the night. The Bad Bunny Damian Priest match, though, was just so awesome, man. I got to give that match of the night, which we'll talk about. But this was awesome, man. Uh, the crowd really shocked me. I think shocked a lot of people. Booing Bianca Belair, cheering for EO Sky, which was kind of cool to see. Not in a negative thing towards Bianca Belair, because, you know, I'm a, a fan. But it was just nice to see EO kind of getting that recognition and seeing, you know, it, it almost played into exactly the story that I think we're heading towards, which is obviously, as you saw by the result more and more eo splitting apart from damage control and i think eo is going to be hopefully a big baby face in the near future so puerto rico you know just being all behind eo sky tonight and booing bianca blair during this matchup i think played into the story great and it was a great matchup, man. Like I said, I think this was the second best matchup of the night up until, you know, the Bad Bunny Damian Priest match. It was the match of the night. This EO Sky was the NXT EO Shirai, if you will. This is the EO that everybody's been waiting to see on the main roster. And as I mentioned in my prediction video, it's not that she really, uh, I think, has been purposely holding back or has been held back, but she's just been in this tag team group environment. She really wasn't given the position on the main roster at any time since she came back at SummerSlam or debuted at SummerSlam last year to really go out there and show what she's all about. This was the biggest match for her main roster uh, run to date, and they definitely showed out, man. Bianca and Io threw everything at each other. I'm looking at Wikipedia here. 18 minutes. Sounds about right. They definitely got some time, and it was a great way to start the show. I really love this matchup, and as I predicted in my... Uh, prediction video i was all for eo sky winning the championship here i think it would have really solidified her as a star on the main roster especially with this crowd tonight which sort of played right into it but we're playing the long game here with eo it looks like they're definitely gonna split her apart from damage control first then down the line we'll get a championship run out of eo sky and i really you know i predicted eo sky but i didn't i obviously knew that bianca blair was champion for over a year since last year's wrestlemania but then they mentioned on smackdown that Bianca, if she retained, would be the longest reigning women's champion of the modern era, which I don't even know if they, I don't even know what that's referring to, the modern era. At first, they said of, of uh, longest longest reigning women's champion of all time. Then they changed it to modern era. But what? what point is whenever they it's 11 o'clock at night as you could say uh as i'm filming this i'm stuttering my words but once they said that on smackdown i immediately went yeah they're having bianca break that record she's going to be the longest reigning champion of the modern era whatever the case is then they said during the matchup tonight that i believe they're in uh tennessee for SmackDown this Friday, which I believe is where Bianca Belair is from. So it just played right into it. And I was just like, Bianca ain't losing this title. But definitely would love to see, would have loved to see EO Sky win. I think down the line we'll get there. Especially again as the result of this matchup. We saw Bailey and Dakota Kai trying to help, trying to get involved. Uh, but it actually ended up kind of costing EO Sky kind of a delayed thing. And then Bianca was able to hit the KOD on EO Sky and retain the Raw Women's Championship. So Bianca retains awesome way to kick things off. And I cannot wait to see EO Sky get her due on the main roster. Because tonight was just the beginning. I'm glad we got to see that NXT EO Sky out there tonight. And I can't wait till she's in there again with Bianca uh, on the opposite side of Bailey and Dakota Kai and getting her run as champion. I think it's going to be great down the line. 
Next up, we had Omos versus Seth Rollins. And as I mentioned in the prediction video, man, and a lot of people were mentioning this, so it's not just me. Seth Rollins giving Omos the best match of his career so far. And that's not saying it was some five-star classic, but Omos looked good in defeat. Seth Rollins, you know, had to, had, had to really, you know, up his ante to defeat Omos, which again made Omos look good falling in this matchup. And it was just a good matchup, man. It was solid. There wasn't nothing too crazy. It wasn't boring. It was it was the best match of Omos's main roster career. And as we mentioned, he, he has had some okay matches in his big matches so far with Bobby Lashley, with Braun Strowman, even with Brock at WrestleMania. But Seth topping them all. Two curb stomps. Omos kicked out. Omos was throwing Rollins around for a lot of this matchup. But even before the matchup, when they cut the music and Rollins was just standing in the middle of the ring and the crowd was just humming his theme song, uh, which I thought was just awesome. And Omos just interrupting that with just a hard kick to the back of Seth Rollins, just interrupting that. I thought it was awesome. It was a nice little spot there to start it. Um, and then in the end, though, Seth Rollins off the top rope with the curb stomp to Omos. Thought it was a great spot. Omos, I know I keep repeating myself, but it was the, my biggest takeaway, honestly, from this matchup is that Omos looked good in defeat which I know might not mean anything to some people because you don't like Omos. I like Omos. I think there's a place for him on the main roster. And Seth Rollins, you know, definitely your front runner to become the World Heavyweight Champion. So I did not want to see him lose here, especially with that tournament kicking off this Monday Night on Raw. So Rollins defeat Omos. Best, mess of, best match of Omos' career. Let's move on. We got the United States Championship match. Austin Theory defending against Bobby Lashley and Brunson Reed. This was a short matchup, but it was definitely a fun triple threat. You know, at, at first, if this was, I feel like if this would have got the time, it possibly could have been on on par. I'm not saying better, but at least on par of the uh, Rollins, Lashley, and Theory matchup from Survivor Series. I know uh, Rollins and Bronson Reed, two completely different competitors inside of the ring. But I thought, I think Bronson Reed, you know, I think the world of him, I think he's great. I think he definitely looked great in defeat in this matchup. So if this would have got the time, I think it would have possibly been as good or at least on par of that matchup. But this match was pretty short. It went like, uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, about seven minutes. Um, and, it, and it felt like that. But in the end, man, Bronson Reed looked good. He had a couple of cool spots in this matchup. He had like a springboard just dive to Bobby Lashley to the outside, just kind of like a fall away dive, if you will, um, and just crushing Bobby Lashley's shoulder. Um, he went for a moonsault, uh, which ended up leading into the finish, which he crashed and burned with, but still was cool. Um, he hit the tsunami throughout this match. I'm a really big fan of Bronson Reed. Ever since he was in NXT, that was the first time I found him. Um, I didn't know of any of his uh, work prior to that, but once he was in NXT, I was like, this guy looks cool. He's different. And he wrestles awesome. I'm just very happy that when Triple H brought him back in December. And I love that we've seen Brunson Reed, not necessarily in a bunch of major roles in a major program so far, but he was in the Elimination Chamber back in February, had a great performance. He's been mixing it up with Bobby Lashley. Uh, and one of at least the main parts of Monday Night Raw, as we've casually been just kind of going through the motions the last few weeks to get through the draft and get through Backlash. And then still, as I mentioned, look good in defeat tonight. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next for Brunson Reed especially with Austin Theory and Lashley moving to SmackDown. It's going to be a fresh start for the big man. On Monday Night Raw, I'd love to see him involved in the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Obviously, he's not going to go to the finals, not going to win, but he can definitely, again, look good in defeat there, especially if he's in there with a Seth Rollins or if Drew McIntyre's back or whoever it may be. I am looking forward to seeing what's next for Brunson Reed on Monday Night Raw. Big fan of his. But in the end here, the result, Austin Theory retaining the United States Championship, which I don't think anybody in the world expected that title to change hands. Theory and Lashley on their way to SmackDown and I expected Austin Theory to bring that championship with him to SmackDown. Bobby Lashley, I don't see him winning the United States Championship. I should say, didn't see him winning the United States Championship on uh, Backlash and don't see him winning it anytime soon. Lashley versus Roman Reigns, whether it's at Night of Champions or Money in the Bank, is definitely needs to happen within these next few months if Roman's not going to be losing the title anytime soon. Definitely is one of the matches, you know, Lashley and Reigns, AJ and Reigns, um, possibly even Karrion Cross and Roman Reigns. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of Karrion Cross. I am. I think he's uh, definitely good and just one of those, I don't want to say total package guys, but has a lot to offer. Um, so there's definitely some fresh matchups for Roman Reigns on SmackDown. Lashley is one of them. So I didn't see him having another reign with the US title. And this one, I think, finally separates him and Austin Theory because they've basically been, uh, you know, going back and forth here and there with pauses in between for. Uh, the better part of what six eight months i don't even know since maybe september october so i think after tonight we can move on even though they're on the same show from lashley and uh theory theory can go off defend the u.s title get some new challengers i think a lot of people would love to see him and la knight on smackdown a baby face la knight i think just makes the most sense in the world right now and lashley moving on to be a challenger for roman reigns again just makes the most sense this is a good triple threat uh, matchup for what it was awesome theory retains the united states title next up we have the smackdown women's championship match rhea ripley 
defending against Zelina Vega. And this was a lot of fun, man. It wasn't a long match, and they didn't do too much throughout the match, but it was really the atmosphere, uh, especially with the crowd, as we talked about earlier, that made this matchup. Rhea Ripley came out first. Zelina Vega came out second to a thunderous reaction, all decked out in Puerto Rico colors. Of course, she is Puerto Rican. First time, I believe, that they said she has wrestled in Puerto Rico. So it was a big matchup for her, as you know, we all knew going into this matchup. And uh, even during the ring entrances, uh, Samantha, what's her name, Samantha Irwin? Or I, I don't know her name. I, I apologize. But she's a fantastic ring announcer off the top of my head. Um, gave, gave her the introduction, and then they just let it breathe for a minute, let the crowd chant for Zelina Vega. I'm glad she got that moment because um, Zelina's really good, man. I, she really hasn't got that chance. Almost similar to EOS Sky in different ways. They really haven't had that chance to show that um, on the main roster. So I'm glad Zelina got the spotlight tonight. Definitely deserved. And uh, it was a good match versus Rhea, man. They didn't do, go too crazy. It wasn't super long. Definitely, Zelina still looked good. At one point, she had her family at ringside. She brought out whatever they call it in, in, in Latino and Puerto Rico, the basically flip-flop and threw it at Rhea Ripley, whatever. I thought it was a funny spot. Um, but then later on, we had Rhea, or excuse me, I should say Zelina hitting the 619, going up, hitting the Meteor after for a close fall. So Zelina almost beating Rhea Ripley there. Uh, but of course, as we expected, the Nightmare Rhea Ripley retaining the Women's Championship of Friday Night SmackDown and bringing it to Monday Night Raw. So, um, and definitely after the matchup was a cool spot as well with Zelina. Uh, getting her uh, showcase in the uh, in the ring and just, you know, Ray Ripley's to the back, Selena gets her spotlight in the ring for a few moments there. But I think now that we have gotten through Backlash, Bianca retains her title, uh, Rhea Ripley retains her title, I do think we will get some kind of rechristening of these championships, possibly this week. I don't see a swap of the titles, especially with Bianca's reign uh, going over a year right now. It just wouldn't make sense to end that reign technically slash continue it with a swap of the titles, and I don't think Triple H would make that decision. I think we are getting uh, two brand new women's championships. I think Rhea Ripley will be crowned the new women's world champion with a new belt on Monday Night Raw and Bianca Belair will be crowned the new WWE Women's Champion with a new belt on SmackDown. I don't see a swap of the titles. I think that's absolutely silly. That's a Vince McMahon thing and I don't see it happening. I see bright, two brand new titles and I could possibly see the same thing happening for the tag team division as well if they want to split the tag team titles uh, and have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn just hold one title for Monday Night Raw. That all remains to be seen but that's where I think we're heading for the women's titles. Again, possibly this week. Maybe they'll uh, wait till Night of Champions or something. I don't know but I do believe that is where we're heading with Rhea Ripley, Bianca Blair, and their respective women's championships. And let's talk about the freaking match of the night, man. San Juan Street Fight, Damian Priest versus Bad Bunny. First off, we got a live concert, basically, in Bad Bunny's entrance uh, as the crowd was singing his song as if it was at a live Bad Bunny concert, which just created an awesome atmosphere. And then, I don't know if he did it on purpose, I don't know if he made to make the homage, but Bad Bunny wheeling the cart, the shopping cart of weapons to the ring like it was ECW and New Jack was coming to the ring, I thought was just freaking awesome. This matchup, man, and listen, I think we all knew this was going to be good. I mean, Bad Bunny and his one... Uh, well, I know he, he was in the Rumble but a few years ago, but just disregarding that, in the tag team matchup a few years ago at WrestleMania, absolutely killed it, man. He just surprised everyone. Him and Logan Paul have absolutely set the bar for celebrity appearances. Like, it, they literally go out there and they kill it every time. And I know this is Bad Bunny's only second real match, but my God, did he up the ante this time and again has raised the bar in his own appearances. We had Bad Bunny going out there hitting Michinuku drivers. We had Bad Bunny going out there hitting Falcon Arrows. We had Bad Bunny going out there and taking, uh, I, what was it, a South of Heaven or a Falcon Arrow? I believe it was a Falcon Arrow, I'm forgetting, but it was a six spot off of whatever, you know, platform or, or, or utility boxes, I think they were, through three tables. Bad Bunny taking this massive bump. You know, it just, it, it it's almost so like, you see Bad Bunny, you see a guy who does not need to be in there doing what he's doing, taking legit bumps, doing legit wrestling moves. And again, I know I just talked about raising the bar, but that makes, you know, fill in the blank celebrities that have come over, come in over the years. And as, you know, Corey Graves or Michael Cole, whoever it was said on commentary tonight, like sometimes you'll see celebrities come in basically just to show up and promote something. Bad Bunny don't need to be doing this. They literally mentioned that he was at the Met Gala. He was at Coachella in these last few weeks. And now he's here at Backlash putting on one of the best matches of w in WWE in 2023 of the year and, and the match of the night. Like, hat is off. My, my, my mad respect to Bad Bunny because he absolutely killed it. It, took a beating from Damian Priest and dish, dished one out at the same time. This match was freaking awesome. And it really <laughs> got taken to another level when the Judgment Day, Dominic Mysterio and Finn Balor hit the ring. We got a beat down on Bad Bunny. Rey Mysterio runs down. The numbers still too much. 
And then this thing just gets way out of hand in, in a great way. Like nobody saw this shit coming for a million years. Carlito, Carlito hits the ring. Music plays, we didn't get the whole intro, we just immediately went into the song, but Carlito hits the ring to a thunderous reaction in Puerto Rico. My ruthless aggression heart exploding tonight. So happy to see Carlito. I don't know why he wasn't offered a contract two years ago when he made an appearance in the Rumble looking like a million bucks. In case you didn't realize, he still looks like a million bucks and Triple H should have offered him a contract yesterday. I hope he gets signed and is like a part of the LWO or at least just goes to Raw, like whatever. He, Carlito needs to be on the active roster. Nonetheless, Carlito hits the ring to the shock of us all mixes it up in there hits a backstabber on finn balor ray hits the 619 on dominic carlito spits the apple in dominic i'm like what is going on right now dude came out wearing lwo colors Finn balor and dominic try to flee and savio vega comes out which somebody even said on social media it might have been yesterday might have been earlier today i don't know when it was like man you're going to puerto rico you gotta bring savio vega out and not only did they show him in a backstage segment earlier in the night giving Dave, or excuse me giving bad bunny a custom puerto rico kendo stick but the dude comes out to yet another pop and he's just kind of standing there for a minute and i'm like is he bringing somebody else out and then after that the lwo santos joaquin wild and cruz del toro come out and they everyone just starts beating up on Balor and uh, Rey Mysterio and I started cracking up almost because Rey is leading the charge for a gang beatdown on his own son which is, is so hilarious after the story we have seen and it was just such an awesome moment man we get this huge brawl in the aisle way makes its way through the back and then we get we still get like three four more minutes of Bad Bunny and Damian Priest going at it Bad Bunny hits a couple of moves on Priest uh, Priest might have hit something on Bad Bunny, I forget, but the finish of the matchup, Bad Bunny pull, throwing it back to WrestleMania a few years ago, Canadian Destroyer, Puerto Rican, Latino, whatever you want to say, just a badass destroyer in the ring to finish Damian Priest, wins the matchup. This <laughs> match was so awesome, dude. And not only that, but like getting to see Carlito, which again, just as a ruthless aggression kid, I know it's just it might ju just be Carlito to some people, but like as a ruthless aggression kid, it means the world to me, so that was freaking awesome. Savio Vega, I didn't grow up with Savio Vega, but obviously I acknowledge the legend. Cool to see him as well. And you know what, and I put this on Twitter, not only was it just an awesome moment, huge surprises, all that stuff, but my favorite part of this whole thing was that through Bad Bunny being out there, Carlito, Savio Vega, Ray, my favorite thing is that Santos, Del Toro, and Joaquin Wilde got to be out there and get the rub from all these big names. Get the rub from Bad Bunny and his spotlight. Those three guys are better off coming out of this weekend than they ever have been. And good on them, because I love Legado Del Fantasma, now uh, the LWO. I think those three guys are extremely talented, especially Santos Escobar, man. And I really want to see them in prominent roles on SmackDown moving forward. Them as tag team champions in the future, Santos challenging Austin Theory for the United States title I think would be a banger match up there that could be that could be a series of matches that I think would kill I'd love to see Escobar with that gold those three guys coming out like I said out of this weekend better than they came in and that was my favorite part of this whole thing is just seeing those three guys get the rub from all these superstars around them it was an awesome match awesome moment and that's honestly I can't say any more words about it match of the night between Bad Bunny and Damian Priest in the San Juan Street fight following this which this was how do you follow all that you got you got the six-man tag team match the bloodline versus Matt Riddle Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and listen this was a good six-man tag and honestly not even the fact that it was following Bad Bunny and Damian Priest because I was still interested in this matchup all the way through and I think the crowd was for the most of it I think this match was really just the and I don't say this in a bad way, because I think we all knew this anyway going into it, but this match was really the underlining uh, fact, if you will, that it's time to move on from the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn portion of the Bloodline storyline. There's still a lot of story to tell with Jay, Jimmy, Solo, Roman, and all that situation, but including Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, maybe even Matt Riddle into it anymore, I think it's time to move on from that. And hopefully we will with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn off to Raw, Matt Riddle off to Raw as well. I know Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are the tag team champions, so they still can appear on SmackDown as they stated on commentary tonight, unless obviously something changes. But hopefully we just move on from that whole situation because I think it's, it's I don't want to say it's ran its course and they've, and they've dragged it out too long so i don't think that's the case but i think it peaked at wrestlemania it made sense to continue it for the few weeks have the rematch and then of course backlash was coming up it made sense to have this six-man tag but after tonight man 
the bloodline won through some i don't know so I, 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 I just put two words together chaos anarchy <laughs> through some shenanigans which we'll talk about uh but i think it's just time to move on after tonight and it was a good six man tag the underlining stuff here you know more chaos if you will more dissension in the bloodline between especially jay and solo they were trading you know tags back and forth solo almost hit the samoan spike on jay there's a lot of bickering between the bloodline throughout this matchup ultimately for solo sakoa to hit the samoan spike on matt riddle and the bloodline walking out victorious i would have went the other way i think bloodline taking a loss here would cause excuse me even more dissension in the bloodline but, you know remains to be seen where they're heading from here I, I i'm not a big fan of smackdown being involved in the world championship tournament uh coming up starting on raw but i do think there is a chance that soul sokoa may be in the finals as the smackdown superstar versus seth rollins the raw superstar at night of champions not personally what i would do but that i think is a possibility so if that is the case seth rollins won earlier in the night the bloodline wins here with soul sokoa getting the pinfall so i do think that is a possibility of where we're heading at night of champions so if that's the case it makes sense the bloodline here uh bloodline won here excuse me but uh, again i think after tonight definitely time to move on kevin owens and Sami Zayn, plenty of more teams that i want to see them mix it up with for the tag team titles they still have a long tag team title reign to go hopefully i don't want to see them drop the titles before night of champions because they don't go over to saudi arabia i think that'd be silly there's a ton of teams that they can work with judgment day uh you know legato or lwo and again obviously they can switch between both brands uh viking raiders the oc ricochet and ali alpha academy street profits yeah, there's a ton of teams that i want to see kevin owens and Sami Zayn mix it up within their title reign so hopefully it doesn't end anytime soon bloodline win the six man tag let's move on from the Sami Zayn and kevin owens portion of the storyline and get into the next chapter of the longer bloodline story and then we got your main event cody rhodes versus brock lesnar and honestly this for what it was was pretty good it wasn't you know uh, a big time wrestling uh clinic if you will like kind of i don't want to say brock versus aj and brock versus daniel bryan was these big wrestling clinics but there were certainly some of brock's best matches over the last you know handful of years this was definitely still good for what it was you know cody ambushed brock before the match started with a suicide dive was beating him up with the steel steps the steel chairs at ringside and then the, we, we kicked the match off cody got a little bit of offense and then it basically turned into brock you know taking cody to suplex city which it looked like they were honestly heading towards a very brock versus john cena and they even mentioned this on commentary SummerSlam 2014 uh long squash match where brock was just going to beat up cody for 10 minutes and then win and that was just going to play into the whole cody rhodes adversity thing which i didn't necessarily agree with but that's not where we headed in this match anyway brock beat up cody for a couple minutes cody at one point exposed the uh one of the turnbuckles and just a few moments later brock face first on the exposed steel gushing immediately obviously the hard way shoot got blood uh got busted open and it was cool to see you know i like seeing a little color every now and then and brock especially getting busted wide open it's just like watching uh, i just like a, a beast just like even more enraged i don't even know how to say it but it's just a cool sight like you guys know what i mean just bloody brock is just badass uh so he got busted open cody hit a couple cutters um hit his hit the disaster kick hit a crossroads uh, i believe he might have hit two crossroads and then brock uh kicked out of those don't think brock did brock hit the f5 or i think he went, went, might have went for the f5 i'm not exactly sure at the top of my head but in the end brock had the kimura lock in on cody cody was able to leverage over and uh score a kind of a sneaky pinfall on brock lesnar for cody to win this matchup which i did predict but at the same time i was honestly surprised like i just had this feeling throughout the day and during the match like brock was gonna win even though i predicted cody but cody won and i'm happy about that and i think in with, with brock getting bloodied i think it actually played into the matchup i don't know if they did it on purpose or not or at least tried to do it on purpose and it actually happened uh, but it definitely played into the fact that Cody scored that sneaky pinfall on Brock uh, so I think it was awesome and I'm, I'm glad that they chose to have Cody Cody Rhodes win this match instead of Brock Lesnar um, it was very you know Cody just sneaking by so I, I can definitely see Brock on Raw trying to retaliate and ambushing Cody Rhodes and tr trying to take him out whether they had a rematch in uh, Saudi at Night of Champions or possibly brock takes cody out for a couple of weeks which eliminates cody rose from the world championship tournament uh so they can kind of neglect the fact that cody won't be going after the world title to try to make it make sense i think either of those are possibilities remains to be seen but for what this match was man i think it was good i enjoyed it and i really enjoyed the finish because cody rose won brock got bloody and i think i just think they went around went about it the best way they possibly could if that makes sense and i was hard on this match a little bit leading up you know i, I talked about in my prediction video the lack of build and lack of sense that was was made of this matchup and i honestly failed to in my prediction video 
talk about the little bit of positive from this build, which was the Cody Rhodes promos. And even on SmackDown, man, Cody gave one hell of a promo, a uh, final promo leading into this match with Brock. So there was definitely some positives throughout the uh, build up to this, which was really just Cody Rhodes promos, but still overall, they still never gave us any reasoning, which they even acknowledged as part of the storyline, which I, I still doesn't make it any better, but they never gave us any re true reason why Brock ambushed Cody Rhodes or anything like that. It was just like Brock beat up Cody. He might be mad about this and now they're going to fight. Regardless though, if this was the result, we got a good enough matchup here. It was better than, I don't say it was better than what I expected it to be. It wasn't necessarily what I hoped it would be. It was somewhere in between. I thought it was good. And again, as I already mentioned, remains to be seen if we get a rematch or uh, just more of storyline progression out of here. But overall guys, Backlash was a hell of a time. Triple H continues to give us NXT takeover like pay-per-views, man. I mean, going back ever since Clash at the castle every single pay-per-view has been good has been great i don't even want to say good to great it has been great i mean you look at some of the the b pay-per-views if you will extreme rules elimination chamber backlash tonight like they have all been banger shows and people came out of extreme rules people came out of elimination chamber saying these are the best of those events of all time people came out of survivor series saying it was the best survivor series in years same thing with the rumble same thing with wrestlemania people even though night two might not have been as good as night one people overall said wrestlemania 39 was one of the best wrestlemania is ever and we can honestly say that in my opinion about backlash as well i think this was one of if not the best backlash pay-per-view event of all time it was a great show let me know what you guys think down below be sure to like comment and subscribe go follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok at no nation vlogs and as i mentioned earlier hit the join button down below we will be kicking off channel member exclusive videos later this week on the channel you're not going to want to miss out thank you guys for checking out this video more content to come i will see you guys next time peace